Right, for this part, we'll concentrate on the, the chassis, uh, the connection and the front suspension, and also the various parts of the winches, which will fit to the chassis as well and, and lock it into place. So I've already cut out the main components for step two, which is the chassis rails and the, the mountings for the front suspension. Uh, I really want to check these first because I'm not sure just how well they're going to hold it. I think the front part uh, will be okay. So, so you've got a peg here, this other part fits on the back side. It's got a really nice uh, location for that. And then that goes through like, like that. So once that's in place, uh, this isn't going to be able to come out. The back section here, it's made up of the, the pipe, which I've already glued together and I've put in the pivot point, which is there. The location for that's not very good. I mean, it's got very little holding power at all. I'm not sure if you can see, but it's just a tiny little nip there and a little recess. So what I think I'm going to have to do is bore that out, remove that and bore through and I'll put in a piece of brass rod of, uh, it's about 1.5 mil and that will kind of lock that one in place. The chassis rails themselves, very well detailed. You can see there's the various uh, bolt detail, various uh, attachment points and things. There was some injector pin marks on the inside which I've cleaned up. But they're, they're very nice uh, mouldings. This one's got actually more detail on it as well and more location points. What I did find though was on this main bracket here, you can see there's a, a recess there and there's a bit of a peg. These aren't very good fits actually. I mean, there's a bit of play and it's a bit of an uh, open joint as well. So I'll glue it up and then I'll, I'll see what I can do with our affiliate or with putty or, or something else. But yeah, certainly there's a bit of free play. So I'll have to be careful with my location. Uh, purely because of the back point here, which locates here. And again, a little square peg into a square hole. But there's so much flop, slop in there. Uh, it's going to be a juggling act. So what I'll do is I'll probably tape everything in place before I put the glue in. Because on this one, particularly, or the front, if I move that too far forward, and this is rotated too far back, the, the axle is just going to drop through it. So let me uh, tape everything temporary in place, and then we'll have a look and see what we'll do. Okay, so I had a look to see how, as we spoke about earlier, it's just not going to fit. Uh, or it will fit, the uh, uh, location point's not very positive. So what I did was marked it with the airbrush needle again. The 1.5 millimeter drill fitted perfectly in that recess. And then using 1.5 mil brass tube, I can actually get that to go through. So that will be the pivot. On the front frame, I 
with the trim off the, the stub that would go into the recess. And again, just marked it with a needle and then used the same 1.5 mil drill. So, you get the brass chip to go through. So that's how it will look when we come to fix it. So what I'll do is, I'll leave it for the time being, uh, but I'll end up trimming this to length and gluing it to the frame on the, the back side. And then when it comes time to fit, I can drop it in here first and then drop it down into this pivot and then glue in the plate and lock it. And then it won't be going anywhere. So I got the front uh, brace put in. Now, what I had to do was on the edges, I was able to scrape and trim and cut back uh, the shoulders where they, they fit against the inside of the chassis rails. And they've went a lot closer now. Uh, in a dry fit, there was lots of gaps, or big gaps, so with the trimming of the shoulders, they've kind of went in uh, pretty well now, so I wouldn't need to do any filler on that. So the next thing to do now is to see the, the relationship between the axle and the, the pivot point so I can get that set. So what I'll do, if I can put this in place just for the temporary. Oops, it's a bit awkward with the rails in the way. But if I can get that in place. There we go, and if I can hold it tight enough just to get that in. Okay, so that's that. Now if we can just hold that up. Okay. So, as I mentioned previously, <clears throat> the locating pins here are very, very sloppy. So, what I'll do is I'll put it in place, hold it, and then see if we can get the glue put in after that. <clears throat> Now just have to try and get these located into that little pegs. So once I get a bit of pressure on it, I can get them into. them into the locations. Okay, so that's it held now. So if I can try and push up forward or rotate it, that should be sufficient now to hold it. So the front's secure. I've now got the back section in. The pin's holding up in new place. So if I keep the pressure on here and apply the glue to the pegs, that will lock the, 
the correct angle and don't want to get glue in my fingers because then I'll end up with fingerprints all over it. I'll just keep the pressure on for a bit. Okay, so let's, uh, I'll hold this for a wee bit and then we'll come back and see where we're at. Okay, now this is time to set up. We can start looking at uh, some of the other parts here. So what we'll concentrate next is uh, these pulley system here and that fits into the end and that will square off the, the frame because at the moment it's still still quite loose. So I've already cut out and cleaned up the parts from that so let's uh, put them together. This main box here had a fair bit of flash on it and still has so we'll see how uh, these slots need cleaning up. So with the, the pulleys, I originally wondered how I was going to clean up this or clean up the seams, but I, I realized in real life, these would be separated so you can uh, feed the tool cable through the different pulleys depending on what you wanted to do. So they would actually be uh, in two halves anyway. Just need to make sure we get the box around the right way. This goes on like that. Yep. I had to use a drill bit just to make a bit of a counter sink on the holes just for these pegs to fit properly. Got the shaky hands again today for some reason. So we've got the pulleys on and there's also uh, a couple of rollers as well. There's one here and there's an upper one. So I'm guessing the cables will feed through and then pass between the rollers, the guide rollers. So I just Oops, I'm missing a 
appear to be missing one of the brackets. So I've got that one, I think it must be missing G17. Okay, disaster avoided. Uh, it was actually still in the sprue. I thought I'd cut them all off. Just while we we're gluing up. Uh, I bought this DSP, I'm not sure how you pronounce it, but it's just a glue holder. I just bought it for a bit of fun. Because uh, as I've been progressing through the build, a couple of times I've almost knocked me extra thin over, and I actually forgot I had this. So, I've dug it out, and it, it's a lot more uh, stable now. So, I've got to say, these parts are fairly sloppy. And how they go and locate, uh, particularly this part. And it actually looks like it should go together a bit more, but it would appear. It's actually quite correct to be standing off, but it just doesn't seem right. Oh, it's far too much. Let's see if we can set some up. So this side is flush and this side sticks down a bit. So. test fitted that before but obviously not. Just goes to show the uh, importance of dry dry fitting before you uh, go to apply any glue. I actually thought I had, uh, but obviously not. Sure if you can see but it's kind of white marks which shows that plastic's been stressed so hopefully holds its shape Actually, I'm not finished yet. I've got these two 
Uh, look like uh, grease as or oil was for for the for the rollers maybe. I think that's where they go. The diagrams are very clear to be honest in this instance. Okay, so that's definitely finished now. To be honest, I think this is the first real part of the kit. So far, it's kind of let it down a wee bit. I mean, the moldings here, the rollers, uh, the pulley wheels is really nice. And same with the end plate. The box had a lot of flash on it. And just these Everything was a bit either flashy to get the, the brackets in or you know, very loose and open. Yeah, it's a, a, this part's a bit disappointing. But anyway, that's that. So let's see how. Okay, so make sure we turn this upside down. The rollers. Just try to see how this fits. Okay. So those little pegs. goes that way. There we go. That actually just slotted in very nicely actually. Careful, it looks like that it's located on the top, but there's nothing stopping it rotating. And on the other side, that, yeah, that, that would do very nicely as well. I'm just looking at the plans here. So we've got the rear. Uh, tow hook with some kind of spring, I guess, to cushion the, the snatch of the, the tow bar and the tow hook. Well, that fits in here as well at the same time, so we'll have to get that ready because if we glue this, we're not going to be able to prise it apart to get the ends of the, the springs in place. Uh, these two I've already prepared. Just have to be careful the orientation of the holes. Uh, yep, so let me prepare this uh, rear tool who can spring and then we can get the pulley assembly in the tool hook uh, 
look at in one hit, along with these uh, torsion chains. Okay, so I went ahead and uh, glued in the pulleys and the uh, rear toe hook in these uh, support bars here. They're actually a continuation of the mounting for the leaf springs. So I glued these in first and then slid the pulleys into position and then fitted the leaf springs because they go right through both sides and then pulled that forward into position. It actually fitted in quite well. What I've also done is on the, the front suspension, I trimmed the brass support or pivot uh, to length and epoxy glued that in. So that should, that slips, that slips in. That slips in fine now. And it's actually held in place without the other plate being in, being in. So, so that's that kind of finished for the time being. So moving on. Moving on, uh, we'll start doing the, the winch drum, the power takeoff with the, the winch brake, and then this, uh, the drive to the, to the drum. So we'll glue them up next. Okay, so here's all the parts of the winch drum cleaned up. So we'll just, uh, just get these together now. There were some big ejection pin marks here. Uh, I filled them up. I, I tried different things. I tried uh, Tanya's uh, basic white putty and a few other products. I ended up just using Miller Putt, which was the first time I've used that. And I've got to say, I'm very impressed with it. So on the winch drum itself, uh, we have uh, a row of teeth here. And what this is supposed to represent at the top is actually the cable itself. So the cable is clamped down on the outside of the drum, fed through the hole. And then, although it doesn't have enough space in here because this is wider in here than it should be in real life, the cable goes through the hole and then winds around the drum and then would uh, pop out on the side there to go through the the uh, rollers and then fed through to the front or to the back sorry to the pulleys at the back so that's that this lower part here i'm guessing based on the diagram that these are some kind of spring to take up a slack or to absorb shock loads to the, to the pulleys.
so that's a few bits of detail to put in here. Just check the top. Okay, and then that fits in nicely there. I'm not sure if I should try and leave that off or... Okay, so the, the drum fits through that gap there. So if I don't glue that, I should be able to spin it around for, for painting. Yeah, I'll be able to paint it progressively. Okay. Okay, so there's two parts here. Oh, so we'll go to B44 and B45. I don't think I've cut them off. So I've got that part so They were very, uh, very flashy actually. It, it took a fair bit to, to clean up without damaging the, the, the fine parts of it. maybe a bit out of shape because it's pushing the pivot point out. So there's another part here, B14. Okay, so I'm up here, this part has to go in after. And then there's a little peg there to go into corresponding hole. Okay. But I need to find a B14 as well now. Oh, and here we go. So let me clean this one up. And we'll continue on after. That's this bit uh, cleaned up now. It's actually on a diagram, it's not very clear how this fits in there. So it's saying the spade bit at the end fits against the wall, which makes sense. But then it's saying this little peg here fits to the underside of this barrel. However, there's nothing on the underside of the barrel, but you've got a, re uh, a recess here for that peg next to the spade. So I think this is wrong because it does, the peg does correspond with that and the spade does correspond next to the, the, the wall. So, just be mindful of that. It's going to be very, uh, quite awkward to, to get in here. I think this here and these on each side of the average fits like that. There must be some kind of rollers just to keep the the cable that's wound in the drum just to keep it in place, I think. 
So this now has to go in here. Yeah, see, it, it fits in perfectly between there. And then this one will be the same. And then I'll just keep the cable uh, pressed up against the pressed within the drum. So let's see if we can get this one done. Okay, I haven't knocked anything else out of position, so that's in its peg. So now we can uh, get the top plate on and close it all up. Okay, so that's the winch drum uh, assembled. We can still freely spin it, which we'll need to do so we can uh, uh, paint it. There's another bracket that goes on there, I believe. Okay. So we'll put that aside. The next part I'm going to do is this. Uh, so this is the the PTO or the power takeoff from the gearbox into the drive, which will drive the winch. And this uh, section here is the uh, brake, the winch brake. So I'm, I'm guess we'll just start from the the base up like the diagram shows okay, okay. so on the part it's like a circle but there's a, a flat on it and that corresponds to the, to the flat on this part here And then on the other side. We've got the same uh, with a flat. This one's got a hole in it because that's where the universal joint uh, for the drive shaft is. Okay. These parts are are fitting together very well. Okay. 
So now we've got this here, we just need to make sure, ah, okay, so there's a little peg on one edge and there's a cutout on the other. So this should go, yep. I also, I also had to clean up the hole. The, the hole was more or less filled in with flash. Just looking at the diagram here to make sure I get my orientation correct. So based on the diagram, because it's a square peg, we need to make sure this cut is the right way around. If it goes there, it's too far around. So it must be in that position there. So on the brake drum, uh, you can see there's a, there's a little peg in the, the base of it there and there was a corresponding uh, divot on the end here. The end was very poorly uh, moulded, it was very wavy, so I've just filed it down and then using a drill I just reinstated the, uh, the hole there and then that will allow it to, to bottom out and the lines will be uh, on conjunction. Okay, a couple of bits left to do. Just making sure I'm getting my orientation correct. So that will fit into there and then the single bit is for this plate. Okay. Okay, just a plate left. Okay, so there's another uh, locating point here, so we need to make sure we get that around the right way.
Okay, so that's the power takeoff and the, the winch brake. I didn't clean this up very well. It seems to be okay at one side, but there's a, a bit of a gap. So I'm just hoping that uh, this is vertical because the, the misalignment might affect some of the other components that will attach onto it. A lot of this is all hidden anyway, so uh, it's not too bad if it, like miss bits like that. However, I don't want it to be misaligned because that will affect subsequent assemblies. Okay, so that's that part done. Uh, and then we'll do this part here. So this is a drive wheel for the, the winch drum and this is getting its power through the uh, PTO here. And then these rollers are to pick up the cable when it comes off the drum. So this one's pretty simple. Oh, I haven't cleaned this this gear wheel up yet because I, I wanted to show how I wanted to show how they've. Uh, molded it so because we've got teeth or a representation of teeth around the outside edge you would destroy that if the sprue gate was on the edge so they've actually put this sprue gate to come in from the side onto the flat so when you trim this up you're not actually going to damage or remove the uh, the gear teeth Just clean this part up. And they actually did the same technique for the, the, the drum because of the teeth on the edges, the sprue gates was on the top. See, I can safely scrape away the, the remains of the gate without, without damaging the, the detail of the teeth. I'm assuming it can only go one way. Or we ah, see it can go two ways, so I have to be careful here because we don't know because the peg is offset to one side. Does it go this way or does it go that way? So what will happen there? is depending if you get the teeth the wrong way it's either going to clash with the drum or it will be a way i think having a look i know it could be either or i'll have to see how this fits on the chassis because this comes up close to it and then the gear teeth will align so let me just check that and before I progress because I don't want to glue this on the wrong way. Okay, so a couple of points. Firstly, I didn't need the chassis to determine where this sits. So the, the bracket here in this bottom one fits onto there and there. And Like that. So what I determined was 
because of the the slot is parallel to the edge of the wheel, it doesn't matter what way around the the gear goes, the distance is always going to be the same obviously because it's a circle. So but what I did work out was based on the drawings throughout uh, it sits as far onto the the top as opposed to being the other way around where it would be sticking more out. So we'll we'll put it in position uh, from that point. What I did also find out so which isn't so great and it's a good example of my newbiness is I came to position this on the, the chassis however the locations are a couple of points here which I removed so there's a particular point there which would correspond to that and it would sit in there but of course I made it flush and there's a, another one here which had one of these extended past so that would sit on this one here and of course I made that flush as well so uh, oh actually maybe not maybe I just have the one that I've removed because that doesn't sit far enough back so that should be oops So this one here would be about there, which makes sense. Okay, so I just removed the one point. So there'll be another locator. But regardless, you know, it's just, it just shows you, you need to plan ahead to make sure you don't start cutting off locating tabs, which I have done in this particular case. Shouldn't be a problem, hopefully. So we'll continue with uh, this part here. So the next thing to do is the rollers. And we'll peg fits into there. And of course we've got the two upper ones. on the top. We'll do that first. I said it's not a very uh, strong mountain point to be honest. So I'm wondering if the other end actually sits into something. Have a quick look. Ah, okay. That makes sense. So the other end's got a bracket here which will then a uh, couple of pegs here which will fit into these two holes so that will support the other ends of the roller so I might just leave that off then so that would fit on there, okay I might, I might leave the rollers off for the time being until I can get this glued on and that. I don't want to put everything on because then I'm going to reduce my access for painting. Oops. Yep, 
so it will fit into there. And then the other end fits into there. Yeah, look, I, I don't want to go. Actually, I'll just glue it up. So, what am I doing there? Before I don't glue the uh, the drum. Making sure I get the orientation of the the rollers the right way around. So if let's let's just see how they are. the power take off. Okay, so it looks like it just hangs hangs down like that. Okay, so that's fine. So that's really the winch assembly done. I can feel the <laughs> the gear teeth on the other part. So this is as much as I'll do for this uh, until I get painted up. I'll paint this up the PTO and drum, uh, the brake separately because it's just getting too, too much in here now for painting it all. So I'll leave that as is for the time being. The I won't fit this to the chassis yet. I need to work out how I'm gonna make sure I get this in the correct location now that I cut the, the uh, locating peg off. Uh, 
and for the chassis itself there's still a lot of or a number of attachments to do with this a uh, bracket here with some like an air tank there's an additional air tank to go on in some other uh, some other bits and pieces so I'm kind of at the point now do I prime and paint what I've got and then add prime and paint and add it separately or do I just put everything on and then prime and paint but my concern with that is being able to get paint into all the, the recesses when this starts filling up with uh, additional attachments so uh remember how I think of that you know I'll come back because there's also I mean, we've still got additional components for the, the, the winch itself as a support bracket. There's a, another spring to go on. And, and it looks like some uh, braces or levers or whatever. So, I don't know I think. Here's the universal joint for the power takeoff. And that's the underside of it. I'll go into that hole there and then that will line up with the transfer case from the gearbox with the prop shaft. So it is getting to the point now where I need to decide either bang on chassis related prime paint or start priming and painting where I'm at now. Bear in mind, I'll keep these separate anyway. I forgot I can uh, attach the front toe hook with its uh, spring at this stage as well. So the parts have already been cut out and cleaned up and uh, I've assembled the spring with the U-bolt plate and the, the hook. Make sure I get them on the right way around. The parts fit and these are, are really good actually. So the tow hook and spring itself pivots on this end and so you can swing it out and then you've got the locking pin here. Uh, I was actually thinking I could drill and pin this, cut this uh, locking pin out and make a new one of brass so it can come in. So you could actually, uh, if you wanted, have this able to to be pin come out and uh, swivel open but uh, there's no real point I guess it doesn't add anything so the next part would appear is C54 which is this and that appears to be some kind of bump stop for the for the spring And it fits on. 
the fear of it is a bit awkward. It fits in behind. You can actually see the cutouts that correspond with the angles on the brackets. Okay. I think I made that a lot more difficult than it needed to be. Oh man, keep pushing it all apart. There we go. So yeah, as you can see, uh, the end of the spring is behind the, the locking pin. So it would be very easy to make that uh, movable if you wanted. Probably no need to, to go to this end, but I'll just put a dab behind. Okay, so that's that's that done now. Oh, goodies. So I think the purpose of these rollers on the on the side is to uh, pick up a cable as it comes forward. Even the wrong section fits into there. Okay. Yeah, so I think in some instances the cable can run up the side of the chassis from the pulleys. There is other pulley wheels to go on the side and then it will go through that roller and through that roller and that kind of keeps it up and down and side to side and then you can hook it onto the toolbar for storage or... Okay, so that's, that's it now. Done, hopefully. So moving forward, we'll work on these air tanks. There's a couple of different ones. Uh, so what I've done is I've, I've glued them together already and I've drilled out the holes in case I do future pipe work. So I've already cleaned the seams in one, which looks like it's will come up okay. So we'll do, we'll do the same for this one. As you can see, the there's a bit of, of a seam from the two halves. I like how they didn't mould them with these uh, spigots on the seam. They've actually moulded them on one half, which makes cleaning them up a lot easier. So the first thing we'll do is <clears throat> we'll use a scraper to take a seam down.
We want to watch we don't put, don't put any flats on the sides of them. Then on the ends, just kind of work from one side to the other. And we'll want to try and maintain that sharp uh, shoulder. So with the, the bulk of the seam gone, we use one of these soft, they're quite rough, but they're very soft, so they, they mold. You see, if you put a pressure, it flows around the, A bit more, maybe. And then on the ends, same deal.
So with that one done, <coughs> I'll use this one, which is a finer one, and that should uh, remove the scratches from the, the coarser one. A buff. I really like this flowery one. This is my favourite one. So you go with the blue side first and then you buff it with the white. And it kind of polishes the, the plastic back to like how it came off the sprue. And then on the white side, you can hear it squeaking, which means it's buffed back. So you can see the bit of shine on it now. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that's it. So you might be able to see it as a bit of a shadow of a seam, but that might just be the shadow of where the two, uh, two halves meet. Once we get the primer on, we'll see if there's anything that still shows through, but at the moment they're looking pretty good. So here's the A-frame trimmed up, with a nice detail in there, some bolt detail on the bottom, and that fits on <coughs> the specific areas within the, the crossbars, but here's, and then this air tank, so on, it sits on the A-frame, these two U-bolts. Uh, just cut them out. I cut one of them out. So that's 32 and 33. I've trimmed one off. It was very difficult and very fine to make sure it didn't damage uh, the U bolt. Okay, so I wasn't so lucky with the second one. Uh, unfortunately, that split. But we should be able to glue it up once we get it onto the frame. So 
So I actually assembled this off camera. It was just, it was a real struggle to get the tank in position and get the uh, U-bolts glued on to that. I had to trim the legs slightly because they're slightly too long. But uh, yeah, it was just, it was just too much of a struggle to try and film it. Uh, I've also attached this part here. Surprisingly, that was a one piece molding. It wasn't made built up of anything. So I'll prime and paint this uh, off the off the chassis because once it goes on it, it's going to start uh, interfering with getting paint into all the right places so the next part I'll do is uh, I'm going to do these frames here for the other tank which again is a, another assembly here which I, I don't know I might leave one or off and then there's, there's a number of little uh, parts to go on the side. Uh, I've done the engine mounts here. And the bracket there is for the, the gearbox mount. And there's a couple of hooks on the sides done as well. So I, I don't think there's much more I want to the chassis before we get painting. So the last assembly I want to make for this uh, video is this uh, frame here that actually holds the, the other air tank. So I've already cut the parts off and cleaned them up here, ready to go. But what I'll try and do is assemble it on the frame so I can remove it for painting. So the first part is this uh, bracket here, it's got some nice bolt detail again and that fits, that fits into that slot previously put in. It fits in nicely and then you can see the holes or the locators for the U-bolts uh, for the tank and then we've got the other frame which sits in nicely as well so I won't glue the, the ends and then hopefully uh, once I glue the tank and the other parts on I'll be able to lift it up so I just need to make sure that I get the tank glued in securely enough that when I pull it out, it will all stay together. And positioning the tank, I need to make sure it's centralized and that the let's see I almost put the tongue back <laughs> the wrong way around to make sure that I don't cover up any of the holes because I've cleaned up the tank and polished it it's uh, it's very hard to grip now actually there we go so that doesn't seem to Maybe push it forward a wee bit. Like I said, I don't want to cover the locating holes. <clears throat> so while that's uh, going off, I'll assemble this other component. I'm not sure what this is actually. Maybe the instructions will highlight what it is. 
I believe it's the tra trailer brake servo. So we'll put that together now. Okay, so I know I didn't install this yet. Uh, I didn't install the uh, U bolts. Okay, so just looking at the, I'm not sure if you can see, but you can see how far down uh, they actually pass. So they're a bit too long. What I might do is just just mark where I can cut them. Let's just trim off a tiny, tiny amount. So hopefully this is enough now. Probably trimmed off just a fraction too much at a time. That might be enough there for the... And again, so it's just a wee bit too long. Okay. Oh man, I cut these ones well shot. Or one side anyway. So I think I might just lock it in position here. Okay, that front is just the, the back side's a bit, yeah. Back side's cut well too short. 
I guess in retrospect, I would have been better off just filling a hose in the tank and putting in a piece of brass wire. It would have been a lot easier, probably quicker and cleaner as well. Yeah, so we, we're missing a wee bit here. It's a bit short, but I might be able to just, when I take this off after it's all set up, I'll be able to maybe uh, just putting a little, gluing a little piece to, to make up the gap. So all that remains now is for this part here, which which fits a, uh, okay. Just have to bend that down a wee bit. Make more in line. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll leave this to, to dry up for a bit longer, then I'll, I'll pop it up and then see if we can fix that a little bit. It's cut over short. I mean, I guess I could leave that in place. I was concerned about getting access, but really there's nothing above or below it. so. But I'll pop it out anyway to fix that and then we'll see if uh, I'll put it back in and glue it permanently. Okay. So this was the last uh, assembly for this video. This uh, popped out okay. I had a bar shape putting in a bit of stretch screw. Not the best, but I think in its location, because it's actually upside down, there'll be very little uh, opportunity to see that so with that done the chassis itself i've added on this uh, spring here which gets uh, connected onto the the winch drum assembly i've got another pulley put in here uh, Okay, this uh, it's an air bottle for the tire inflation. There's a valve here which hooked onto this uh, molded in line here as well. This was added, and again, it's to do with the winch drum assembly. It's actually supposed to be angled like that. And that's about it. So this is as far as I want to go with the chassis. So I'll end uh, this part here and then the next step will be to uh, do the priming of all the, the individual assemblies and the uh, base colour as well. And then the other tab. That fits in quite nicely as well. Uh, onto there. So that almost clips into place. And of course the, the one which is done uh, sits there as well. So that will pop straight in as well. And then the power takeoff and uh, winch break. So along with the front axle and 
the hubs and steering. We'll get all these uh, primed up for the next video and uh, we'll get some colour coats on. Thanks.